Hey y'all, it's your girl Duana, and I'm excited to share with you another sew along with my new pattern ME2014 with Nomi Patterns. I, view A is super cute and flirty. I'm just like, man, that's me? Oh my gosh, girl. You wanna go out, have some fun, go on a date night, you can wear this. For view B, we got the crop top. View A and view B have boning on the bust area, which is awesome. Boning is actually not too hard to put on, so don't let that discourage you. I did a brief tutorial on how to use the boning and how I use the boning, but definitely if you feel like you need a little extra help, I would definitely look that up. The bodice of view A and B are also lined, which is pretty cool, so it gives you that extra support. Get your copy, get your copy, get your copy, get your copy. Without further ado, I now present to you my sew along. So go ahead and grab the pattern, and we are gonna be looking at view B, the crop top. An important thing to mention is that when choosing your correct size, you want to look at the finished garment measurements and you are going with the bust size. So whatever size matches best with your bust measurement, that's the size that you should cut. All right, so let's take a look at the pattern pieces that we are going to need. All right, so let's take a look at the pattern pieces that we need. This is piece five, the front interfacing, and you're going to cut two of these. Next is pattern piece number six. This is the back interfacing, and you're gonna cut one on the fold. You're also gonna cut pattern piece number 16. This is the front. You're gonna cut two of fabric and two of lining. You're also gonna cut out pattern piece number 17. This is the side front. You're gonna cut two of fabric and two of lining. The next piece is pattern piece number 18. This is the back and you're gonna cut two of fabric and two of lining. And the last piece that you're gonna need is pattern piece number 19. This is the side back and you're gonna cut two of fabric and two of lining. Let's take a look at the fabric for this pattern. I have my main fabric. My main fabric is a little light, so I decided to pair it with denim so that it is a little bit more sturdy. You also need 3 8 inch boning. You also need a 12 inch separating zipper. I have here a 9 inch zipper as well as a 12 inch. I couldn't decide which one I wanted to use, uh, but I found that a 10 inch zipper actually works the best. So I ended up switching it out in the sew along and you also need matching thread. And last but not least, you need fusible interfacing. All right, so now let's take this and get started. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your main fabric and you're gonna stay stitch the front edges of the front between the notches. With right sides together, you're gonna pin the bodice side front to the front matching the notches. Make sure you're also clipping to the stay stitching if necessary. All right, so once you're done pinning, you can base stitch and then press the seams towards the front. So now you're going to grab your back pieces and with right sides together, you're going to stitch the center back seams of the back sections. Then with the side back sections, you're also going to pin those together. Make sure you match notches. Once you're done pinning, go ahead and stitch those together. And then you're going to press the seam toward the center back. Now you're going to top stitch the side front and the side back seams because this is where you're going to be inserting the boning. Unfortunately, you can't really see the top stitching so well on this fabric, but just make sure that your top stitching is enough to fit the size boning that you choose to use. Also, you need to do some securing stitches at the top so your boning doesn't pass through. You also want to stitch the shoulder seams together. So notice that I did pin the sides together, but please do not stitch that. That was just me doing it out of habit. All you need to do is stitch the shoulder seams. So now go ahead and grab your boning. This is the type of boning I like to use. Um, there are different types, and with this one, you definitely want to cut around the edges to make sure that um, it is not sharp. I like to make it rounder so that it doesn't poke through my fabric. It's sometimes a good idea to also wrap some fabric around the ends, but if not, you can simply pass it through. 
So I'm gonna pass through the boning and once I pass the boning all the way through until it hits the securing stitch at the top, I'll pull out about 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance from the bottom edge and cut off that amount. I push it back through without that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance at the bottom so that when I stitch the bottom, I won't stitch through the boning. And there are many ways to apply boning, so this is how I do it. But if you would like to try another way, feel free to do so. And again, out of habit, I stitch the side seams together. Make sure you don't do that, and you will see why in the future steps. Okay, so now that we're done applying the boning, we are going to get the lining. Okay, so for the lining, you're going to stay stitch the front edges of the side front lining sections, just like you did for the main fabric. Then with right sides together, you're going to stitch the front lining to the side front lining, matching the notches. Wherever there are any type of curves on your fabric, I absolutely love to pin because I know everybody has had that moment where they think they're sewing the pieces together and they find out that they missed the fabric. So definitely do that when you are um, sewing with curves. All right, so now stitch those two pieces together and we're gonna move on to the back pieces. So with the back, you're doing the exact same thing that you did with the main fabric. So you're gonna stitch your side back seams in the lining sections the same way that you did for the main fabric, but this time you're not adding boning. So now once you're done pinning, you're gonna stitch those together and now we're gonna go ahead and grab our interfacing. Using pattern pieces number five and six, you're going to place the interfacing on the wrong side of the front sections of the lining, as well as the back sections of the lining. Go ahead and pin the shoulder seams together, and then you're gonna stitch the shoulder seams together. Again, do not stitch the side seams. I did it out of habit, and I did have to take it out at the end. So now go ahead and grab your main fabric and your zipper. This is a 10 inch zipper. Turn under 5 eighths of an inch of the front edges of the bodice. And then you're gonna pin the closed zipper face down under those pressed edges, centering the top and bottom stops between the large dots. Technically it's under, but it's showing over because I wanted to fold it out so you could see it. So you're gonna pin that all the way down along those pressed edges. So once you're done pinning it down, you are going to baste it using an adjustable zipper foot. You can also use a regular presser foot, but you'll just have to move your needle all the way to one side. Once you've done one side, you're gonna do the other side in the same way. Also make sure you are still matching your notches, centering the top and bottom stops between the large dots. And once you've pinned those together, you are going to baste stitch. Once you've basted those pieces together, you are going to check your zipper and make sure that everything lines up perfectly. And if it does, you can go ahead and move on to the next step. As you can see, I have removed my side seams, so this is how you should have had it. Also grab your lining pieces and it should also look the same. Make sure that you press under 5 eighths of an inch on the front edges of the lining as well. With right sides together, now you're gonna pin the lining to the bodice, matching centers and seams, having raw edges even. Continue to leave your side seams open for turning and then also trim any seams and corners and clip any curves. Brace yourselves, but this is gonna be a lot of pinning. So just to make it clear and simple, you're basically pinning around every single thing except between the zippers and the side seams. So yeah, go ahead and pin the bottom as well as the armholes. Once you're done pinning, you're going to stitch the top from zipper to zipper. You're also gonna stitch the bottom, and this is all bottom pieces, as well as the armhole edges, which is not videoed here. 
So when you take this to the sewing machine, you always wanna start at the center back. I do not like starting from one edge to the other, just in case anything gets misplaced. But if you start from the center back, there's a better chance that everything lines up more um, evenly than if you started at one edge and moved on to the, um, the other edge. And as I get closer to sewing over the zipper area, I wanna make sure that my lining pieces on both sides are folded down. So I'm gonna stitch all the way down and I'm going to also back stitch. And this is what it should look like when you are done. You're gonna do the same thing for the bottom pieces. And when you do sew the bottom pieces down, you wanna make sure not to go over your boning. So that is why we left 5 eighths of an inch open for stitching so that we don't go over our boning. And this is what it should look like when you are done. Go ahead and turn your bodice right sides out through the side openings. This can take a bit of time, but once you are done, go ahead and press around all the edges to make sure everything is flat. When you are done, you can go back to your sewing machine and you're going to understitch the bodice lining as far as possible. You can pretty much use anywhere there's an opening. So I used the side seams and I also used the zipper side depending on where I was doing the understitching. If you've never understitched before, the whole idea is that you're facing the seam allowance towards the lining and that you're stitching on top of the lining as close as possible to the seam. And remember, you can only go as far as possible. You can't do all of it because it's just gonna be almost impossible. But just do as much as you can. We are almost done and I'm going to show you why it was important to leave the side seams open. So the best way I can explain it is through the zipper sections, you're gonna reach for the side seams and with right sides together and raw edges even, you're gonna pin the bodice and lining at the sides, matching the armhole seams and the lower seams. And once you're done that one side, you're gonna do the same for the other side. Again, you're just gonna go through the zipper side and you're gonna reach for the side seams. You're gonna pull it through and you're gonna pin those together, right sides facing. And this is literally the second to last step. We are gonna stitch those pieces together. And once you're done, you can see that it is all put together. Now all you have to do is make sure your bodice lining is attached to the zipper with top stitching. Go ahead and pin the pressed edges of the lining to the zipper. Make sure you do it to the other side as well. So once you're done, you're going to go ahead and on the outside, top stitch the bodice front about one fourth of an inch from the pressed edge. So when you're top stitching, you may need to pause and move your slider away so you can stitch the bottom a little bit better. And now you are done and that is it. So last but not least, I would just take a pair of scissors and just clean up any loose threads. I would press it again and that is it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to tag me in your makes for Nomi Pattern ME2014.